All right, in Karis Cures today, we are looking at the difficult process of grief. After losing our dear friend Denise Desenzo, we've certainly experienced grief, as we know many of you have as well. But what's normal? What can you expect to feel, and how can you deal with grief in a healthy way? Well, Kara sat down with a grief counselor to learn more. In the case of Denise, so many viewers have also felt like they've lost a loved one, even though they didn't know her. So yeah. is it okay, and what does it mean to mourn a public figure? Yeah. It is okay, absolutely okay. The the warmth that the people talked about her, uh, the the, uh, the the cool and the, the calm in, in any kind of crisis, right? Um, people are drawn to that kind of energy, right? People are drawn, drawn to that kind of, this person's keeping me safe, this person's caring for me, this person's protecting me, right? And keeping me abreast of what's going on, right? Um, and so I think it makes sense that people would, would miss her. In the case of a sudden death, like we experience with losing Denise, Sewell says it can be tougher. When a death is sudden and unexpected, it's it feels more traumatic, right? There's a lot of uh, coulda, shoulda, woulda. It's like, well, what if I did this? Or could I have done this? Or I should have done this? Or thinking somehow that we could have undone what happened, right? Even if we couldn't have, right? Um, and so I think that there's that element with a sudden death. It's more shocking. It's more just, it comes completely out of the blue. And it, it's very destabilizing. So what can people expect for the grieving process? Yeah. Um, so it's, again, we talked about, you know, not expecting kind of a neat and tidy process. No human emotional process is neat and tidy, right? Me emotions are messy, right? The human experience can be messy, right? And so it's thinking about more of kind of a fluid and flexible process. You may have heard the five stages of grief are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. But the process is not a checklist. It's not linear. Sure. But grieving is important. That's actually yeah. part of the healing process. Yes, absolutely. We have to feel to heal. Um, and we have to kind of go through grief. We can't go around grief, we can't go over grief. We have to go through it in order to heal it. Grief can last a lifetime, but it changes. So Sewell advises us to think of the grieving process as being like a grandfather clock that oscillates between the two sides of grief, confronting it and avoiding it. She advises to dose your grief a little at a time. If we notice that we're Con we're confronting too much, right, and becoming overwhelmed, right, uh, and it's starting to interfere with our functioning, we need to find ways to take a step back and we need to find a distracting activities or activities that can help kind of calm us or soothe us, right, and vice versa. If we're avoiding too much, that's just going to prolong our grief. Remember to be kind to yourself. If your best girlfriend was sitting right here with us, right, and she was going through the same experience, would you say that to her? Right? And if you and, and of course the answer is unanimously, no, of course not. Well then why is it okay for you to do that to yourself? Why is it okay for you to beat yourself up? What I can do for that person that's grieving, right, is to just sit there and hold that space with them and be present, right? And ask them questions and allow them to talk about whatever it is that they want to talk about. Sewell says we should avoid the shoulds. Advice giving is not usually helpful and grief can't be fixed. Also, be consistent with reaching out. One of people's biggest fears is others will start to fade away. Routines are important for the person grieving. The proverbial rug has been pulled out from underneath of you, right? Your, your life is kind of topsy-turvy, so it's important to kind of maintain some level of routine. If the griever feels stuck, seeing a grief counselor can really help. Because maybe they don't feel like they have enough people in their life they could talk to about their loss, or maybe they don't feel like, um, um, maybe they don't understand what the process is like and they just want kind of a sounding board to be like, is this normal? Is that normal? Should I be doing this? You want to surround yourself with supportive people. How can we support someone who's grieving? Because I think many times we make mistakes in that area. Yes, absolutely. Being more specific in terms of, like you've used the example, what can I bring you for dinner? And can I do it on Thursday or can I do it on Friday, right? Self-care, like eating healthy, rest, and exercise are even more important during the grieving process, which is physically exhausting. It's what are things that even can give you a sliver, a moment, you know, a moment of feeling a bit better, even if it's temporary. Acting in honor of your loved one can help. It's something we're all trying to do here at Channel 3, and Sewell says growth after grief is one positive outcome. The flip side of grief can be post-traumatic growth, right? We have a horrible experience in our lives, and then, and then we, but we can grow from that experience. And I've met so many people who, in the context of whatever difficult life experience they've had, have grown from it. Hmm. All right, some important takeaways. There is no set time frame for grief, so it's about checking in with yourself, asking what do I need right now, and knowing whatever that is, it is okay for you. Yeah, and people will need ongoing support, not just in the beginning. 
If you'd like to learn more from Nikki Sewell, you can visit her website, MilfordGriefTherapist.com. All right, Kara's continuing the conversation on grief in her Kara's Cures podcast. You can subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts, and we'd also have, we're also going to have a link on WFSB.com.